The vast majority of the extrasolar planets found so far are centered in a relatively limited area of our galaxy, the Milky Way. The Kepler Space Telescope, which is run by NASA, has shown that there are more planets than stars in the sky. We can figure out what exoplanets are made of by measuring their sizes, diameters, and masses, weights. For example, Earth and Venus are very hard, while Jupiter and Saturn have a lot of gas. Even though the elements that make up exoplanets are similar to those that make up planets in our solar system, the amounts of those elements that make up those exoplanets can change. On some worlds, water or ice may be the most common thing. We have found lava worlds with seas made of molten lava, and planets with dense cores that are still orbiting their stars. Everyone knows what each of these planets is. In the 1990s, scientists found the first worlds outside of our solar system. Since then, they have used many different ways to find thousands more. It is very rare for astronomers to see an exoplanet through their telescopes the way you can see Saturn from Earth without a telescope. This method is called direct imaging, and it has only been used to find a few extrasolar planets so far. Most of the planets found this way are young gas giants that circle their stars very far away. We are now a part of a universe that has worlds outside of our Sun. The number of confirmed planets has already hit the thousands and is continuing to rise. This information is based on a very small part of the whole galaxy. The number could hit the tens of thousands in the next 10 years if we keep sending more and more powerful robotic telescopes into orbit so they can see more. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope was used to prove the existence of an exoplanet for the first time ever. An exoplanet is a planet that orbits another star. The planet's official name is LHS 475b, and its diameter is 99% as big as the diameter of our own world. Its size is roughly identical to that of Earth. The study team is led by Kevin Stevenson and Jacob lutzig Yeager, who both work at the Applied Physics Laboratory at Johns Hopkins University in Laurel, Maryland. After carefully looking at interesting targets from NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS, which gave hints that the planet existed, the team chose to use the James Webb Space Telescope to look at this target. With only two transit views, the near-infrared spectrograph, or near-spec, on the James Webb Space Telescope was able to take clear and simple pictures of the planet. There is no question in my mind that the planet is there. Webb's immaculate statistics validate it, remarked Lutzig Jaeger. The fact that it is also a small, rocky planet is impressive for the observatory, Stevenson went on. Being a dwarf planet is just the cherry on top. These first observations from a rocky planet about the size of Earth open up many new ways to study the atmospheres of rocky planets with Webb, says Mark Clampin, who is in charge of the Astrophysics Division at NASA headquarters in Washington. Webb is helping us learn more and more about Earth-like planets outside of our solar system. And the mission is just getting started. Only the Webb telescope, which is now in use, can study the atmospheres of planets like Earth that circle other stars. Scientists tried to figure out what was in the atmosphere of the planet by looking at the transmission spectrum. They don't know yet if this planet has an atmosphere or not, even though the data shows that it is a land world about the size of Earth. Aaron May, who was also affiliated with the Applied Physics Laboratory at Johns Hopkins University, claimed that the observatory's data are beautiful. The telescope is so sensitive that it can easily find a wide range of molecules, but we still can't say anything for sure about the atmosphere of the planet. Even if the team can't figure out what is there, they know for sure what isn't there, said Lutzig Jaeger. We can rule out some atmospheres that are like those on Earth. There can't be a lot of methane in the air like there is on Saturn's moon Titan. Even though it's possible that the planet has no atmosphere at all, a pure carbon dioxide atmosphere is one of the possible types that has not been ruled out. This is another thing the team has taken note of. Lutzig Jaeger says, contrary to what most people think, an atmosphere made up of only carbon dioxide is so much more dense that it is very hard to find. 
to tell the difference between a pure carbon dioxide environment and one with no atmosphere at all, the scientists will have to take much more accurate readings. The researchers plan to do more observations this summer, which will help them get new spectra. Webb also said that the planet is a few hundred degrees warmer than Earth. If clouds are found, this could lead scientists to think that the planet is more like Venus, which has an atmosphere full of carbon dioxide and is always covered in thick clouds. Webb also said that the temperature of the world is a few hundred degrees higher than on Earth. We're at the forefront of studying small, rocky exoplanets, said Lutze Jaeger, a member of the research team. We know very little about what their atmospheres might be like. We haven't even started to scratch the surface. The scientists were also able to prove that the planet goes around its host star once every two days. This was something that Webb's exact light curve made clear right away. Even though LHS 475b is closer to its star than any other planet in our solar system, its red dwarf star is only about half as hot as the Sun. Because of this, the scientists think that the world might still have an atmosphere. Because of what the researchers found, it is now possible to find smaller red dwarf stars that are orbited by planets about the size of Earth. This confirmation of a rocky planet shows how accurate the mission's instruments are, Stevenson said. This is only the first of many things it will find out. As far as this telescope is concerned, rocky worlds outside of our solar system are the next big thing. The planet LHS 475b, which is in the Octans constellation, is only 41 light years away from us. The American Astronomical Society, or AAS, gave a press conference where the group's findings were talked about and shown to the public. Most extrasolar planets are found in indirect ways, such as measuring how much a star dims when a planet passes in front of it. This is called the transit method, or by watching the spectrum of a star for signs that a planet is pulling on its star and making its light slightly Doppler shift. Space telescopes have found thousands of planets that were unknown before. They did this by watching transits, which are brief dimmings of a star's light caused by a planet passing in front of or behind it. Gravitational lensing is another way to find things. It's sometimes called the wobble method. The TRAPPIST-1 planets have been looked at by telescopes on the ground and in space. The tests that were done in space showed not only how big the planets are, but also how much of each of the seven planets' gravity affects the others. With this knowledge, the scientists were able to figure out how heavy each planet is. So, we know both how much they weigh and how big they are. Scientists can also guess how hot these planets are because they know how much of the energy given off by their stars hits the surface of these planets. If you were standing on one of them, we would even be able to make reasonable estimations regarding the light intensity and make informed guesses regarding the color of the sky. Even though there is still a lot we don't know about these seven worlds, like whether or not they have atmospheres, seas, ice sheets, or mountains, it is the solar system outside of our own that we know the most about. Thank you so much for watching this video.